This is the new 14 inch Space Black M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And yes, while there already has been a lot of coverage on these new M3 MacBook Pros, most of that coverage actually has to do with the higher end M3 Max version of that model. And let me tell you, the M3 Max model like starts at like $3,000. And if you start configuring it, you can quickly get to like 4,000, 6,000, you get up to like $7,000 configuring out that M3 Max model. So I don't think that's the model that most people are gonna buy. I think most people are probably gonna buy either the base level M3 Mac or uh, what I think might actually be maybe the more popular choice, especially for pro users, uh, the base level M3 Pro MacBook Pro, the one with the 11 core CPU starting at $2,000 because it's a pretty good middle ground of what Apple is offering here. And it actually does come with enough storage at 512 gigabytes of storage and enough memory now. And now it comes with 18 gigabytes of memory, which is two more gigabytes of memory than like the old M2 Pro. So I don't know how much of a difference that's gonna make, but hey, two more gigabytes of memory. No one's gonna say no to that, uh, but yeah. The M3 Pro, it's an interesting uh, chip because there actually has been some surprising improvements to this chip, but also kind of some downgrades, which is, is a little complicated, so I'll get to that later. But before we talk about those chips, I wanna mention the two quick changes that have nothing to do with the M3 Pro chip on the MacBook Pro. And number one would be the new color, right? This is the new space black color um, that is exclusive on the M3 Pro and M3 Max MacBook Pros. Uh, it is a darker shade than the old space gray color. It's probably what space gray should have been. And then um, if you take a look at this M2 MacBook Air in the midnight color, um, you can see that they're both pretty dark, uh, but the M2 MacBook Air is covered in fingerprints. Apparently Apple says there's a new coating on the space black MacBook Pro that is supposed to reduce fingerprints. And you can kind of see that, yeah, it does reduce fingerprints over the M2 MacBook Air. It's not fingerprint proof, like you can still get fingerprints on it, but the fingerprints are not as easy to see. And then on top of that, uh, the display is now brighter. So the old MacBook Pro for SDR content maxed out at 500 nits of brightness. This new model uh, is 20% brighter and now maxes out at 600 nits of brightness. All right, you know the drill at this point. It's time to start the benchmark with our favorite benchmark, Geekbench. I wanna test out single core and multi-core performance. And yes, this is a new three nanometer process. So I'm expecting some pretty good performance gains here, right? Um, now, every M3 chip is gonna have the same single core performance, whether that's the lowest end M3 chip all the way up to the M3 Max, single core performance is always gonna be exactly the same. And on this uh, MacBook Pro, we are seeing 3,200 in single core performance. Uh, and that is good. That is an 18% performance increase over the old M2 chip. Now. Multi-core performance I was curious about, especially now that this comes with less of those high performance cores. Now, don't forget, I am comparing the base level $2,000 M3 Pro MacBook Pro. That is the 11 CPU core design. That is the model we're really testing here, right? And the first test I did was the multi-core performance against the older baseline M2 Pro MacBook Pro, the one with the 10 core CPU. And basically what we got here was a 14,408 score versus a 12,107 score. Basically this base level M3 Pro is seeing a 17% performance increase in multi-core CPU performance, which is good. That's what we wanna see. And it's kind of alleviating some of my fears with CPU performance uh, with the chip architecture change and the core count change on the M3 Pro chip. Now you're probably also curious to know What's that base level M3 chip doing in multi-core performance? Well, this is interesting too. So the base level M3 chip is doing really well. It's getting 12,078. Um, that's basically what the old M2 Pro chip was getting in multi-core performance, the 10 core one, the base level one. Uh, so yeah, that as a replacement, technically the real base level model is, is really good. Uh, but if you're comparing you know, the entry level M3 chip to this entry level M3 Pro chip, um, if you go for the M3 Pro, you're gonna get a 17% performance improvement. Uh, so the other thing you might wanna know is, okay, well there's that 12 core uh, M2 Pro chip and it's like 200 additional dollars. Is, is there any merit to step up to that for CPU performance? And um, this is really interesting. So. If you're getting that higher end M3 Pro chip, it might not be worth it because in Geekbench, we are only seeing a 5% performance increase on that 12 core CPU for the M3 Pro. So um, in terms of like a big CPU upgrade, that doesn't sound like it's worth it. 
Um, now I do have some Cinebench results here. I don't have them for every model, but I kind of want to go through them anyway, just so uh, you can know some things you, to look out for, right? Uh, so again, we're going to compare this base level M3 Pro against the M3. Uh, and on the M3 Pro, we got a score of 914, which is a 24% performance jump over the M3 chip. Uh, now, an important thing to note here is that this is the new version of Cinebench 2024. Uh, so if you're seeing score discrepancies between this and some of my older videos, that is why. Um, again, let's look at that M2 Pro chip, the 10 core design, and that got an 801. So M3 Pro base level versus M2 Pro base level, you're getting a 13% performance improvement. This is pretty much in line with our CPU results from uh, the Geekbench test. So basically, uh, this base level M3 Pro for CPU performance is a pretty good upgrade. Like this is actually turning out to be a good value for CPU performance, even over that higher end M3 Pro chip, doesn't really sound like it's worth it. Uh, but this next result kind of surprised me a little bit, and that is with graphics. So there's something I didn't really cover before. And when we were going over the core counts of the CPU, I didn't really talk about GPU. That's because on all of the M3 Pro models, you are getting less GPU cores. So the highest end M2 Pro chip came with a 19 core GPU design. Now the highest end M3 Pro chip comes with an 18 core GPU design. The base level model of the M2 Pro came with a 16 core GPU design. Well, now the base level model of the M3 Pro or the base M3 Pro chip, I'm sorry, that's so confusing because there's technically that M3 base level, but yeah, the base M3 Pro, the $2,000 model one only comes with 14 GPU cores, two less than the M2 Pro base level. Uh, so when I ran GFX Bench, I, was, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. And it's interesting. So uh, the M3 Pro base level and the old M2 Pro, the base level 16 core, uh, basically scored the same. Technically the you know M3 Pro got like five more frames of total frames, but in terms of FPS, it was 78 versus 78. So kind of a toss up, like no performance improvement for GPU on the new base level M3 Pro chip. The higher end version, the 18 GPU core count, I'm gonna go insane by the time I'm done making this video, uh, that got a 97.9, which is a 22% performance jump over the base level M3 Pro. Very significant, very unlike our CPU tests. So while it may not be worth it to spend $200 for more CPU performance with the M3 Pro chip, uh, for GPU performance, it definitely is. Now I didn't do any head-to-head -head video export tests, but I just wanted to run a video export test on this new uh, MacBook Pro to see what the speed was like. And I did a Final Cut export uh, to H.264 with some light color grading. And basically for a 10 minute 4K clip, uh, this finished in five minutes and 46 seconds. But let's try and answer the complex question of, is the base level M3 Pro MacBook Pro worth it? And I think that answer is different depending on who you are. Now, listen, if you're coming from like an M1 Pro MacBook Pro, maybe it's worth the upgrade. Um, if you're coming from an M2 Pro MacBook Pro, not worth the upgrade. Yes, on the base level model, you're seeing CPU performance increases in line with what we'd wanna see. But in terms of the GPU, um, it looks like it's either gonna be about the same, uh, but then um, if you're trying to decide between a base level M3 MacBook Pro and this mid-tier entry level M3 Pro MacBook Pro, that's another case where it's like, okay, well, yes, that is worth considering the $400 upgrade on uh, because you are getting faster CPU performance, you are getting faster GPU performance, you're getting additional benefits like another Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port, uh, you can connect up to two external monitors where the regular M3 Mac can only hook up to one. And, uh, you know, in the base level configuration, you're actually getting more than double the amount of memory. This comes with 18 gigabytes. The base level M3 Mac comes with eight gigabytes of memory. And if you upgrade that, you know, Mac uh, to 16 gigabytes of memory, then you're only looking at a $200 difference. So at that point, if you strip away the memory at a $200 difference, is the increase in CPU and GPU worth it on this mid-spec model if you need it? Yes, it is. So that's good That's good to know. Uh, but if you're really looking for like the highest end performance increase this year, like you are the power user, you, you want the best CPU performance possible, then M3 Max is probably where you should be looking this year. Um, and before I used to like talk about this, it's like, okay, 
M2 Pro or M2 Max, which one do you get? Well, if you only need, you know, fast CPU performance, it doesn't matter. Don't get the Max, it's a waste of money. But now that the Max has more CPU performance and from what it looks like, pretty significant amount of CPU performance, it's worth it uh, if you need just faster CPU performance. If you really need high-end graphics workloads, uh, it's always been the case that yes, it's been worth it to step up to the Max model. But this time it's different, right? Uh, if you're a high-end CPU user, you should probably start considering that max model as well. And that's not to say that this model won't be fine for like 95% of users. Like this model is still plenty powerful, more than powerful enough for most people buying a Mac, right? But I'm, I'm talking about the highest end of the highest end, the 5% that just need the bleeding cutting edge of performance. Max chip uh, is looking really, really compelling this year. And I get how you can look at that from either a negative outlook or a positive outlook. Like negatively, you could be like, great, uh, you know, the Max chip and the Pro chip used to be on par with CPU performance. And uh, as someone that didn't want to spend a lot of money, that meant that I could buy the Pro chip and I knew I was getting the same CPU performance as Apple's highest end chip. Uh, you know, that's a negative way to look at it. I guess the positive way to look at it is you're not really losing performance. You're kind of staying the same, even though you're dropping maybe the high performance CPU cores, at least the M3 chip is, you know, fast enough to, to make up for that by losing those high performance cores. Uh, but the positive way to look at it is going, well, now if I do need more, if I want more, I can spec out to a max chip and I can get even more CPU performance than I, you know, ever thought I could get on like the pro level chip. So I, I guess that's like the positive way to look at it. You know, are you a half glass empty or a half glass full kind of person? I guess that will kind of determine your outlook on this. But yeah, that's basically my take on this entry level well, base. What do you call this thing now? It's not a base model because they have the new M3 chip. The M3 Pro base level 14 inch MacBook Pro. Um, I still think it's a good laptop. I definitely think for most users, probably not worth the additional $200 on that higher spec M3 Pro chip. And yeah, th there's some crevice with this model, but overall still good, right? It's still Apple Silicon and uh, it's still performing pretty well. So hopefully uh, this video helped you out. If it did, please give me a like. Uh, if you wanna see more from the channel, including future reviews and maybe even more comparisons uh, between this MacBook Pro and others, uh, get subscribed. If you wanna purchase this MacBook Pro, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.